uh, uh, we will uh, go through some of the test standards uh, that was uh, told in the earlier session like the test standards is enough for a tester or a test team in order to have the test plan, specification, procedure. We'll go through what is a test plan, uh, sorry, what is a test standard. Then we will try to apply what are the standards we will go use with an example. And uh, to recap uh, some of the session books uh, from the last class, so we went through the specification example, test case, how to write, uh, how, what is the format, what are the contents of uh, test papers, uh, and uh, how it is designed. So, what are the steps that is needed? Exactly. Similarly, test procedure also we had discussed. Test procedure should be 100 percent covering the test case. So we also went through the test procedure example. Uh, which identifies the grouping of the test cases. Test cases already we have about identified in the test specification and that is grouping is already done. So with this procedure what we do is we will uh, lay out the practical steps of the test cases which we have laid out in the test case. So test procedure by itself is an independent document so which has uh, uh, mentioning the of the test environment and the mapping to the test environment with each of the procedures. So we will have the procedure definition uh, named that we will identify the various tools and setup and uh, test bench, whatever it is. So we told that there are two types one is automated, other one is a manual type. Right? Both are similar in terms of the tools and the rest of stuff, except that in manual testing uh, we use uh, the white box approach. That means uh, the embedded target procedure. In the earlier session, we went to the example test procedure. This procedure is uh, organized uh, as per the template, and uh, it will be matched into all the test cases which are relevant to that particular test procedure. And, uh, we will uh, refer uh, some of the external uh, documents, the internal documents, system of supply documents, etc. Also, we have discussed about the automation between uh, PC based applications and uh, manual testing, where uh, we use the debugger. That is, uh, uh, the user has the control to start or stop the program coming on the embedded target. Also, we have identified uh, the tools used, the hardware tools and software tools. I will not go through again all this. Uh, I will share all this uh, template and examples so that uh, uh, you have any questions, you can get back to me on this uh, example. Okay, then uh, we had discussed about uh, the setup procedure, how it should be laid out, and uh, to build a program onto the embedded system, how we are going to do it, etc. Also, uh, we came to know that uh, test execution uh, can be done through the scripts. The scripts are developed based on uh, the test uh, procedural steps. The test procedural steps can be part of an Excel sheet. The Excel sheet can be used for automating the PC based uh, testing. Then uh, we had this about manual testing which has uh, integrated development uh, environment which has multi or uh, course control studies or etc. Various separate uh, procedural uh, steps for uh, manual testing. Uh, this is a typical uh, test environment how it looks like. So, wherein uh, the tools and all that uh, interfaces are driven to the PC, 
the interface could be any of the interface uh, connected with the target system. Interface could be CAN, Ethernet, USB, etc. And uh, to feed the real uh, time values, we use a breakout box or a test panel which will have all the screens and logs, etc. Then uh, we had aggregated automated uh, test procedures. Uh, test flow will be written here. And the script what we have done in the earlier uh, stages will be inserted here. Basically, the script can be inserted or we can uh, refer to the configured scripts here. Similarly, the manual, manual testing procedures how should be. This also can be done through the script. As I said, the script also can be developed for an ID that integrates with the development environment, which will have a connection uh, with the debugger. Debugger accepts those commands automatically. Uh, the, the, we can uh, uh, have a precondition for a uh, particular group of tests. Those preconditions are uh, something which has to be mandatorily used before we start the test. It could be setting some values or setting a way of capacity limits, whatever. So, also we have referred an example of automatic test setup, manual test setup, how it will be. And also, we can uh, have a test software builder with information uh, inside the embedded software. As I said, the test software uh, is something like a special build which will allow user to monitor or trap or get the data from the target. Then we will highlight the tools version with reference to any special instructions to plug in the tool, whether the tool is qualified, uh, those qualified data all will be supplemented here. Then we have another question called software download question, which will allow us to download the account. So that is about the text for here and example. Okay, so we come to test standards. For us to do all these activities, the case for here, there has to be a standard uh, against which the test software against which the test procedure for developed. Also, it has uh, uh, other information in the case and island, which will be used for uh, evaluating or reviewing or analyzing the tests which are done in the test execution phase. So, the standards it establishes the entire software system for test phase design and description standards applicable for the system and the test and specifically if any variants that can be applied that means uh, if any deviation or if any changes for a specific uh, that needs to be done uh, all these uh, standards will be highlighted and it highlights the purpose of the test standards uh, document uh, in terms of methods, tools or any rules or guidelines uh, that has to be used for test case uh, design and development. So this standards will be uh, frozen during test plan. Means the standards uh, have to be available uh, when we are done with the test plan. So after planning or test plan, test planning process. So this is used by the testers or the testing team. This identifies the rules, guidelines, and the business. For example, uh, a rule is response. To a safety critical objective of 100% coverage of uh, high level requirement. That means uh, this rule uh, can be uh, the user or the tester has to cover 100% of the requirement. And uh, there could be some guidelines which will guide the method to develop a test case development and design. The high level test case uh, can have a normal range, robust, uh, robustness, etc. So, all this uh, uh, design of the test cases in terms of uh, testing codes, conditions, all this will be part of the test standard. So, we will go through an example uh, of test standard. How it looks like. Uh, basic template will be same as the test planning uh, test procedure. 
wearing all uh, the stakeholder, the full uh, chain, and the revision, configuration item, and all this kind of stuff. So basically, the standards will have an introduction, uh, purpose, responsibilities, change control mechanism, compliance will be identified in the system. Next, uh, as we said, uh, we will use the similar review and error control. Then uh, the standard, uh, the standard DO in terms of 262 ISO uh, need to be referred. We will uh, use this uh, mention here. So, method and rules for design and development of this process. So, requirement based procedure. I have put an example for RBD. This is the requirement based procedure. So, that will identify normal robot forms and uh, identification methods. Then we have to identify scenario because we are always in the power of standard. So we have a guideline system, two systems. How the space should be? Uh, like we have single template, the same template has to be uh, highlighted or pointed in the last system. Okay. So let's uh, go through a little details for uh, that. So, that was the document. This document establishes the software test development description standard for the particular embedded target. And the center is going to and who is the customer. For all this uh, information, can be here. And the purpose, whatever it is, we have to point to the same part of the PDF software test case. Development plan. So this is done at the planning. Responsibility: Who will uh, uh, develop or use this? The document is written by the test team, and it's reviewed by the other end project manager, and uh, it will be applied. I'm sorry, it will be approved by the test team or the test team and software quality management plan. How? Change control will be used for developing the test. So this document uh, will be updated by the test team in the case of changes in the project unit by the test team. If there are any changes uh, that need to be incorporated, all that uh, has to be controlled. That controlling information will be part of compliance. Uh, you can put any compliance uh, DO standards. To uh, sorry, it's not the Any internal uh, compliance that you want to highlight, something like uh, the same organization, uh, uh, there could be some ISO or some templates, or some quality manual that needs to be tested. The testing uh, has to be in compliance with that we can highlight it. And as I said, applicable uh, reference documents need to be highlighted. And this should be a separate section uh, in terms of conformance to standard. This standard we want to give the component B. So, next comes the rules. We are going to lay out here the rules against this pair to have a Test case for design and development. So, one example will be one or two examples. Software high level test case description shall comply with this document. That means, after this document uh, pointers, the high level test cases have to be done. That means that the rules, guidelines, and templates defined in this document can be followed to develop test cases on this document. And uh, this document talks about rules and guidelines. What are the differences? The rule is a response to safety critical objectives. Guidelines is formalisms and template constitute um, all this will be part of uh, will be part of the guideline. So if these guidelines uh, will uh, give a pointer to the user uh, or tester in terms of uh, uh, and methods and uh, what are the nitty uh, gritty details about the uh, uh, how test data should be developed in one. So, it is a strictly a guidelines uh, stuff. 
the rule is a mandatory stop. The verification of the application of rules guidelines completes confirming the mandate. That means <coughs> once the test cases or procedures test verification is done, that needs to be verified against this document. That's what the rule says. This is the one rule. This is as part of the uh, now coming to methods and rules for design and development of this paper. Um, the aim of high level uh, test cases description activity is the verification of executable object which complies with the software requirement. Executable object is robust with high level requirement. That means the executable program or the program that is running on the embedded target should be compliant with the software requirement. It should uh, compare to the SRS and it should be robust with the high level requirement. And you should take care of you know, uh, all the robust things uh, in terms of the test environment or development environment. And the executable object uh, is compatible with the target computer. Okay, so the next one is. Uh, To verify that the embedded software product satisfies its high level requirement, uh, the software high level is relative to the following object. That means all the test cases that is developed in the product high level software requirement. These are all a few examples, it can be tailored or a specific need of which updates can be done. The requirements of hardware software in and if there is no ADSB, target can be interface requirement those things to be taken to be explained for or interface to the requirement in the SRS. This should be these are analyzed as interface within the SRS to the verification procedure area of the integration with that means if someone wants to do an integration integration to be against the interface aspects of the SRS. The test cases activity has been following into SRS. Uh, this standard document and this is the plan. So, all this has to be considered as an input for developing the test case. Output of the test case activity is the software test case description document. That is, the test case document itself will be the output of the test case development. Okay. Now, coming to normal range test cases. Basically, this section identifies what are the methods that are used for requirement based test cases? Uh, there are normal range, there is valid equivalence class, there is a limit value, uh, there is a table based, a logic equation, or any special paper, or other stands. All this will be highlighted here. This again depends on the, uh, the target that is uh, being under test. Uh, we will go through normal range test cases, we will have. Uh, Normal range uh, inputs or the normal uh, range of uh, testing for the testing requirement. Uh, they explained it. If a particular requirement uh, allows the user to feed values something like 1 to 10, the normal range is between 1 to 10. Anything between 1 to 10 is called as normal range. This one to ten is normal. Next, uh, as I said, there should be an equivalent class uh, that should be analyzed for that specific requirement. So, equivalent class will be applied on these inputs. And also, there is one point I think uh, very important that a requirement can take only one input, and uh, based on the condition. Could uh, try several outputs or multiple outputs. 
So how are you going to do it? How are you going to uh, modify it? So we need to have consideration of the output also uh, based on the input and other conditions. It's very important uh, basically. So the equivalence class should be applied on both the input and the input. Uh, as I said yesterday, the input could be 1, it could be B5, 7, 8 and etc. Generally what they use is the boundary cases uh, for that particular requirement as an input or output. So 1 definitely has to be there, 10 has to be there because these are falling on the boundary. There can be an intermediate value, so that is 5. Similarly, if that output of the requirement is uh, uh, saying uh, 15 and 20, so both needs to be exercised. That means uh, we, we should write test case in such a way that the, all the outputs that are derived out of uh, a particular requirement should fall into one of this uh, test case design. The outputs suppose 15, 20, 25, 3 outputs are there, we should make sure that 15 and uh, 25 are exercised definitely as a normal range and uh, the mid range as uh, uh, 20. So that we have exercised all this uh, normal as well as equivalence uh, class. Okay. Next we have a limit values that means uh, objective of this analysis is to verify the ability of the target system to respond to the inputs taken at the limits of the equivalence class. Uh, what it means is that if uh, there is an input of say 1 and uh, the requirement says 1 plus or minus uh, point, uh, 1 that means 10 percent of that 1 is used then that needs to be exercised. It means uh, we should have an ability to analyze uh, the requirement in terms of uh, the limit values that means uh, 1 plus or minus point 0.1 means it could be 1 minus Point one, how much? Or something like this. Plus or minus zero point one. In that input can take how much? Zero uh, one minus zero point one means nine, and uh, that uh, will take one point one. So this needs to be used. There are uh, this is useful especially for uh, the analog inputs where we use uh, analog systems uh, which have a tolerance of etc. So this is a very important aspect of uh, limit values. So next we have a tables. Suppose there are uh, inputs uh, mentioned uh, with the help of a table. Uh, in a structure, then uh, uh, at least one case should be created for each bounds of the table, and one another will be created for an intermediate bound. Similar to that uh, normal table, saying that if the requirement is pointing to a table, uh, table uh, needs to be exercised in terms of either an input or also based on the bounds, that is the lower bound, upper bound, and there should be an intermediate uh, value as well. Okay. The next one is the logic equations. If there are any uh, logical uh, equations, something like usage of power and x or etc., uh, we need to use NCDC function analysis to obtain the different equations. I will tell you what is the NCDC in the later sections uh, because that is one of the important aspects of uh, indirect operations. Modified condition and decision power. I will uh, explain more to but that needs to be considered for uh, especially for uh, uh, multiple inputs or multiple inputs and a uh, XOR, etc. Then, any special cases uh, that needs to be uh, taken here uh, from uh, performance related, uh, timing related, or some requirement could say uh, this product should run at few uh, volts, then uh, there is uh, something like time related uh, functions. Uh, there are uh, there will be requirements 
కరెస్పాండెంట్ టైం రిలేటెడ్ కొంటున్నాం సెకండ్ కేర్ అది స్పెషల్ పర్ఫార్మెన్స్ టెస్ట్ కేసు ఆర్ స్పెషల్ కేసెస్ ఆఫ్ టెస్ట్ కేసెస్ డెవలప్మెంట్ అండ్ దీ స్టేట్ కమిషన్ ఐ విల్ ఫర్ ఎడ్ వీస్ ఐ విల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ వన్ ఎస్ఆర్ఎఫ్ ఆర్ ఐ విల్ ఫైట్ ఫుడ్ సమ్ మినిమమ్ ఎస్ఆర్ఎఫ్ ఫర్ అన్ ఎమిడెడ్ టార్గెట్ సిస్టమ్ విల్ గో టు కాబీ విల్ కుంటాం అండ్ ఆల్ ఎస్ఆర్ఎఫ్ కాబట్టి once you understand uh, the requirement probably all this can be derived that's why uh, can i have state and uh, we know what is state uh, is uh, an event it's an output as an event moving to different states within the entire software mm-hmm. of course we have a robustness of the paper as i discussed yesterday which we will do to feed uh, uh, robustness in the middle of the uh, we should uh, if the system or if the reform or the emirate target allows us to uh provide robust tests then we should be able to provide zero point eight or minus one nothing wrong with it we can provide probably uh many systems uh may not allow in that case we need to validate uh manually i will explain that uh the uh next question um but definitely users should consider in terms of giving you value and thank you so these are some of the robustness for that particular requirement which is having in the book as 1 plus or minus 1 let's move into the next book robustness analytics will be performed only for the explanation for the explanation of the explanation of the robustness value is the one we want Uh, as I said, uh, the index for that particular requirement can be from some signal. So that signal uh, could be fed with different values as per the robustness level. Possibly. Then we have a requirement test case by which it is how it should be administered. In this verification level, the embedded target system is considered as a black box. So only that means uh, the high level requirements Uh, uh, will be considered as a black box. So we will have an experiment to test the scenarios shall specify external input simulation. How long is going to stimulate the external input and external outputs, how I should be able to capture. We can use the output for power in our two codes or we could use uh, any of the analysis for our energy measuring systems, measuring the instrument for capturing the output. The next one is uh, first the separate test case of the development standard so the rules specified for requirement based test cases shall be applied on each of the high level requirement that means every test case should fall into this standard that is common so for each requirement the following elements are different inputs the inputs of the requirements conditions uh conditions in the requirement text uh, that causes the requirement test case creation um, equivalence class inputs i think this format we have got from already test cases are expected out so based on this what are the output we will be identify so all this uh, information should be tagged in two tags so this is it should be beginner it should be and uh, test case The next tool is uh, for each function requirement tested, the identification format of the test case will be tested. Uh, it should follow the uh, identification format. This requirement shall be covered by at least one test case. Uh, will be correct one. As I said, every requirement needs to be tested. Whatever the way you want to do. In automated way or manual way or automated way, whatever it is. Uh, for doing that, uh, we need to identify the 
on a bit of it for the the user depending on the maintenance of the equipment or all the time of course in the extra results so we will highlight that proof of coverage for each of the dimension of as expected and uh, test bench or test setup specification needs to be found out here before the procedure and guidelines the uh, result these are all rules rules have to be followed and monitored guidelines are based on the need some requirements uh, may need one guideline other requirements uh, may need other guidelines so guidelines are different system so something like a general uh, guideline that are looking for guidelines no. so an example description of the scenario should be clear and accurate The expected result should be different for each scenario. Each scenario should have an output. Okay. It should result in an expected output. Okay. The setup specification should be different for each scenario. As I said, each scenario will have to be identified with the uh, setup. How I'm going to execute. The preconditions should be specified. These are the guidelines. Some of the requirement uh, may not have preconditions. Directly, we can uh, execute based on the preconditions of the previous part. By itself, it may not be preconditions. In the case, they may have uh, none. So this is part of the right. And uh, in the end, we are going to specify the tools used to produce the SPS development. It will need to be a document, like a Word or Excel sheet, whatever. Or if there is any tool. Uh, used and that are any testing tool we can highlight it. So this is the language used for producing the template. This is document template. So in this case example we have gone through all the verification of the same. Yeah. So in this case it should be identified covering the piece of the requirement. Scenario should be defined. The appendix. Uh, We start all the test cases and scenario specifically highlighted. This is also part of the test case. Okay. Have a set static analysis group of test cases, manual group of test cases. All that will be part of the coverage. How I have organized the test case. That is about the test case standard. So now, until now, we have gone through the test case. Example. Of course, we started with a test plan, test case, a test specification, test procedure document, and testing standard. So, with the help of that, I wish to be able to design this case. So, simple example I had to uh, develop in this case. So, you all know whiteboard, right? Many of you are writing using the pen. We use the whiteboard. So whiteboard requirements I have put four requirements. So we want to give the sample test case for the whiteboard only. So requirements are something like whiteboard shall have a length of three feet by four feet. Whiteboard shall allow to write on it. Whiteboard shall allow to erase the written word. Right board shall allow to write colors like black, blue, green, and red. That is the requirement for right board. So, what requirement? For this, so what are the test cases? The few test cases which I have already discussed. Measure the right board and verify that the length and width of the board is three feet and four feet respectively. So, this will cover the first requirement. Next uh, test case will be. Whether one can be able to write on the board, that is the next step. But we should allow us to write. So that is why we have written this. The next requirement we have tested with is whether one can be able to write black color on the board. We can use verify in short term. So that will be a better way. Usually we use verify. In this case, what we can do is verify that 
major already we have a very good statement the major the right there let me say that the next step is this is on check whether we return words in black and blue or is it it means there is a difference you should be able to write that is the first thing next thing will be you should be visible so both are very important also i think you can add to me something like that verify the one can write uh what is the supplement of this test so we have a specter here black so you can use it in blue color similarly we can uh, we will do right green so and uh, of course as i said you can have a combination of both both should be allowed right we say we are i am taking a simple example so you can analyze this in terms of a software requirement or a system requirement on the end of the verify whether the function is right green and the code next could be check whether or verify whether the function is right Actually, uh, this is not a good practice to have or something like that. So, or words or better you can mention as under this case, anything just word. So, just take uh, an example. Next case, case is uh, check whether we return the black is visible. Try to erase the words. This is the interesting thing. because the requirement uh, has not told but this is by intuition uh, you can uh, have a generalized requirement uh, because we know that what boy board we are testing this. so this case is interesting uh, because of that try to erase the words written and uh, write a new word verify that the words are erased new words are erased i think we have it okay. erase is there okay good that uh, we have all the requirements sometimes what will happen is by intuition user may add more requirement because he has a good knowledge on the system the system is quite more so during the review what will happen is this will result in modifying the requirement <laughs> i have seen that or this will result in uh, adding further requirement so in that way uh, as i mentioned yesterday the testing team or the tester should be independent so he can uh, think out of the box or uh, he can think uh, from his perspective It is always okay. So this is example testing. Any doubts or anything is there on this? You can now ask me. Okay. Let's come to having gone through all these testing standards, uh, test procedure, test specification plan. Um, I have put question. A simple question on that side. Uh, maybe we can do this, and we can take with the answers that we have already done. Uh, why we need test plan, and uh, what are the elements that we can identify? So simple question. Write test strategy for the visual set of requirement. You know what is a test strategy by now, and uh, you should write test strategy for. Testing the below requirement. Below requirement is attached here. An embedded unit instrument. I just put an example. U I product. The software requirements are as per. So we should have a test strategy. How it is? I will uh, further uh, go to the next question, and together we can see into this uh, as well. A example is there. Uh, the SRS has uh, more of operation now. How to carry on? So the next question is write the test case. More about it. There are different uh, uh, operational requirements. I think for now you can write the test case. For that, more of operation 
uh, you can see how good they are and uh, we can write test cases with a specified uh, test format which should be written and as I said you can use an SQL sheet to write it. SQL sheet uh, can be something like this, this is of course an example for a test case scenario or uh, procedure like that. You can enter the step one two three four. The step name. Just uh, highlight what I'm going to do. So in the description, I'm going to tell that set all the inputs as mentioned in the three conditions. So three conditions means it will be pointing to a section which uh, will fetch uh, the conditions that are required for executing this particular test. So after that, uh, we are going to power on the unit. Then we will set the status or error because depending on the sorry status to error because we want to test something uh, on the north of one section where it is going to go etc. We will have just a template we can uh, write using that template. I will share uh, with the example based on that you can do it. Basically, based on the requirement, uh, write the test strategy. First, we need to write the strategy how I am going to address the complete the requirement. You need to understand the complete requirement. But once you understood the, the SRS, uh, there is one uh, section called most of the You need to write test case and you can use the template. That's what it is. Excellent. I'll open the SRS so you can go through this. You will have another understanding. Basically, SRS will have a system overview. I had to put myself a simplest requirement. It's called uh, emirate distribution. So the overview of this emirate distribution is as the below function initialization, maintenance, and uh, maintenance management. Then we have a monitoring monitoring function, uh, which is also called as uh, waiting test management. There is a failure management. There is a fail mode. This is called. So we will uh, have all the failures detected, any actions that are required as a result of failure that also is part of the failure mode. Then we have a download management, I told you earlier that uh, software, Android software needs to be downloaded onto the target. So the software should have a program. I mean the software should have a function which will accept this downloadable program. Uh, usually the embedded system target will have uh, two sets of uh, uh, for systems one is a boot loader other one is an application. So usually there will be a changes in the application. Boot software plus loader. This is called boot loader. This is responsible for downloading the new program. The new program could be new program or image. Some systems will have programmable boot boot loader also. Suppose you want to upload or download new loader itself. So what we will do, we will have this boot software, so that is uh, having this download mode management which is responsible for loading the new loader. So basically download management uh, is a set of functions which are part of boot loader and some functions part of that also in the part of the application. Next one is uh, 
So discuss on. I will not go into the details. Let me discuss on. I mean the device and part that is used in the Android system. It is strictly readable, programmable memory. We don't need to. From the external world, uh, this can be accessed to fetch any of the data, or if the user wants to program a new configuration of calibration, so this is for from the user. Basically, in a separate device, the part of the digital Android system. There is a, as I said, there is a fault or failure that is to be stored when the system is off. There should be a memory. Which identifies the failures or the failure driven that we all have to accept. Then uh, these are typical uh, embedded application in the project. Uh, unit control, this embedded unit uh, has a control function which will drive the, which will drive and calculate the PWS. PWS is the function. It is probably uh, I will not go because uh, I will not discuss of it. Uh, you can Google and uh, get an information about this. Uh, this requirement or this functionality is talking about how you can try the uh, target. So, while driving, uh, we have different functionality voltage control, current control. Then we have a specific motor control MTR, PTR. So we will also drive and control the system with modulation with the current. So it is a motor startup, it is a motor speed, it is a motor current. So this is the control. So I try to put the simplest of requirement. Uh, there are further complexity involved. So let's not touch this. We'll just uh, highlight uh, the basic requirement of the functionality of a typical embedded system. Uh, there is an activation uh, mechanism. I can actually see the data, the actual interface or the inputs or the outputs, how it is going to be communicated in the mirror target. So that is with the help of CAN. So same thing is highlighted here. The mirror unit is the core of the motor control unit and the movement is following the main motor drive control and monitoring and of the digital conversion. Failures and data transmission to outside world by camera, failure storage in the memory and any maintenance that is required to be done to the software loading, download management that is done with the help of CAM communication. And there are of course a few LEDs to the help of IO line that will be in the process. An external expert form will be used as a person. UA will interface with the expert form by using for STL. Let's not discuss about the person and the person. So, there are different uh, things that is involved in the software requirement. We should identify operational requirements, we will identify a record initialization, we should identify download, etc. So, accordingly, you can see the picture. Operation requirement, these are the operational requirements that MIB should have. Uh, with a small uh, depiction of the different uh, modes, modes of operation. So there is a unit mode, there is a operation mode, there is a maintenance mode, download, and upon failure, it will come into failure mode. So these are some of the overview of operational requirements. Then we confuse with the operational requirement with the operation. This is the operation is not a mode. I hope it's clear. Okay, coming to the, the modes of operations, what are the modes that the camera is used to mount on? So these are the requirements. You can go to one by one. Maybe I can explain this question. 
in your little box or in your pocket. So what are the requirements for different mode? Print mode is there, operational mode is there, motivation mode is there. Then we have the load, download, etc. So all this covering as part of the embedded target which we are going to have a test case. So there are timing requirements, there are performance requirements. Uh, there are communication requirements, there is a new scan. We will have these requirements. So, the partitioning requirements will be there. So, then this is the none. There is no separate for different applications involved in this number target. One single application is done. Uh, some industries they call uh, boot as well as application of two parties. It is not directly uh, into that. Uh, simple application. So, different states so that embedded uh, will be implemented in the So, what are those states? What are the number of states? What are the number of states? Those are the state level, uh, sorry, state, proper state requirement. Then we have uh, functionality. Uh, again, you how it's going to do. Insulation is there, building test is there, reset is there, etc. Similarly, we have a fault management, download management, interface management, and uh, there is a section in the end, the tolerance is constant. As I said, uh, some of the unlocks and discrete will have uh, tolerances that needs to be tied to the whole uh, requirement of the uh, So, what you need to do is uh, there is a mode of operation what we saw just now, you need to write test case. So, is here. These are the nodes of operation. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five nodes of operation. Are there. We need operation, maintenance, download, and so the embedded, each, the embedded instrument should be in one of these instruments. Then it's power. One of these, sorry, one of these mode actually. Upon power up, it will be in the installation. Then the installation is uh, fine. Do then it will go for operational. When there is any maintenance is required, it will go for maintenance mode. And now there is a new software or the download is required, it will go for download mode. Uh, similarly, if there are any failures while doing the operational or maintenance or download, it will go for a failure mode. Same thing is depicted here. Uh, you can see there is a small note for each of the arrows. So, that is nothing but a transition. So, how it will go to the next step? From maintenance to operation. So, the mode should be operational, it will become here. The mode is something like a, a state, uh, it is uh, updated by the embedded software based on uh, where it is. So, below are some of the requirements. I will not explain detail in both of the other about the five requirements or most of the questions. That is about uh, uh, test case design, test procedure, and the standards. Of also, we have to discuss about test plan. So, we have a few experiments, and we are clear about this.